Okay, before we go into details about each specific vasopressor, let's talk about some technical issues that apply to all of them. First of all, when you start thinking about starting vasopressor agent because of hypotension, is the the first question to come come to your mind is the patient volume depleted? Make sure you have adequate fluid resuscitation before you start any vasopressors and usually adequate uh, the sepsis guidelines say is saying 30 mil per kg and roughly if you don't have time to calculate just give two to three liters right off the pad the only contraindication to do this in hypotensive patient is pulmonary edema whether cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic if the patient having no signs of pulmonary edema, no crackles and no vascular just congestion chest x-ray not short to breath or hypoxic any signs of pulmonary edema will limit this otherwise go ahead and give the patient two to three liters of normal saline or lr just go and give it because remember without this vasopressor may not work or may not optimally work so every time that's the first thing you remember volume resuscitation once you decide to start vasopressin sometimes the blood pressure is so low like the patient's let's say 60 over 30 so you may start volume depletion with vasopressors at the same time that also possible it's not a wrong thing to do the wrong is to start vasopressor without resuscitating the patient with without fluid resuscitation for the patient who needs it the second thing you decided to start vasopressor make sure you have a central line and i refer you to the central line video now if the patient's crash you have only peripheral rv you can use the peripheral iv for few hours only so peripheral iv for few hours only and please change to central line as soon as you have it why are we doing this to avoid what we call extra vasation that can happen with these vasopressors that they can extra vasate into the local tissue and call and cause a potent vasoconstriction and tissue necrosis if this happen immediately stop the vasopressor and you can give a, a medication called fentolamine you can give it 5 to 10 milligram in 10 mil of normal saline and inject it sub q into that tissue to minimize the vasoconstriction and help with that but remember to take that upper for iv and to stop the medications so that's very important the central line the third thing remember these are continuous iv drips so these medications are mixed with either normal saline or d5w i think levofed norepinephrine and amiodarone mainly in d5w the rest are normal uh, saline so that you need to take it in cons into consideration when you count your i and o's as well also the fourth thing the titration order usually we titrate to keep the map above 65 so that's the number so nurses usually they are the one who go up and down on the vasopressors to maintain this and that's how they wean the patient off this the importance of going up and down in the vasopressors and give the minimum dose needed is to avoid something called tachyphylaxis that the body becomes unresponsive to this dose of a vasopressor so we need to avoid that if possible that's why we keep titrating up and down as i said nurses usually they are familiar with the dosing and titration i'm not gonna spend time here on the doses you can find it on your references you can find it up to date you can also ask the pharmacist who usually in the icu to help you with that but you need to be familiar 
about each visual processor and their uses one thing i'm going to talk about it later on is weaning do we stick to the map especially these patients they have low diastolic pressure to start with how do we wean them off that that we'll talk about it when we talk about weaning of vasopressors thanks for watching thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board